following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 28th, the fantastic or fabulous Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question and you can't call in, Stevie has got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to help me out, put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside that Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Again, I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we got all the U.S. and E.C.s trading to the upside. No mixed bags on Friday. Dow's up 92, S&P 13, uh, Nasdaq 63, Russell's up 10, Semi's up 81. Uh, gold is off a buck. Silver's up 30 cents. Lights recruit off 44 pennies. Natural gas off a, about a nickel and a 30 year treasury. Down nearly one point, printed out at 118.11. We take a look at what's the uh, leaders in the clubhouse to the upside. It is uh, United Rentals, URI, 19 bucks, 3%. KLA Corp, 19 bucks, 2%. United Health, 13 bucks, nearly 3%. Lamb Research, 11 bucks, 1%. Humana, 13 bucks, 3.5%. Our shakers to the downside, MicroStrategy, 84 bucks, 5%. Super Micro, 33, 3%. Kura Sushi, what? That's down 19.59. That's a 23% move there. Nike. Holy shnikes, they have A to B equal CD patterns for their daily, for their weekly, the monthly, I think. It's called confirmed with volume. So it says longer over time. You could see Nike at around that $30 area. You've got HC Healthcare that's off 15 bucks. That's about a 5% move. For solar, down about 6%, 14 buckaroonies there. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's first take a look at that New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator. Oh, it's attempting to close to get above that zero threshold level. Now, right now you can see it's printed at 2.2 or thereabouts 2.3. It price closed above the zero threshold level and then remains above it again on Monday. We will have a shift in sentiment. In other words, this indicator would say that it is now buyers that are in control. And that would match up with what we've got going on inside the VIX uh, index out here. The daily spot VIX is trading below its 50-day. The 50-day is at 1388. If we get both of those things uh, moving, then that could suggest that we had higher. So if that's going to happen, what's going to need to what's going to need to occur out here is we're going to need to see resistance fail at least in the indices, certainly the equity future contracts, which is where we're going to start right now. We're going to move over to those white background charts. Here you're going to see the ES mini upper left hand side. Now when we take a look at the ES, the uh, Dow equity future contract, and the Russell. Each of them have found resistance at profile levels. So those profile levels are very key to understanding where it is that the sellers reside. Oh, we got the proof right here, the living proof. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, we got to go through this because there's a number of different scenarios. The first scenario is we just have a consolidation with inside its profile. And as long as price closes underneath 55.69 today, that will certainly be its message. Support out here, 54.93. Second, if price closes about 55.61, let's say it's 55.67 below the 5569 area, it negates its TD9 count top, 
but it still has a wave number seven top out there, um, and it would still be below profile. So we have a consolidation pattern that would still be in place. If price closed about 55.69, then what we're looking for is the top of this key reversal bearish engulfing candle from June 20th. That high, that uh, formed a uh, sell the D point pattern, I believe. That high is at 55.88. So in, other, in order to get a clear breakout message in the ES Mini, price must close above the high of uh, June the uh, 20th out there. Again, 55.88. Now we move over to the NQ chart. The NQ is consolidated with inside its daily profile. It has struggled to take out that green oscillator and change line. It has been below it for uh, four days, today being day number five. Now, both the ES and the NQ, by the way, have triggered, you can kind of see it, it's a little bit faint, they have triggered rose momentum indicator signals out there. What does that tell us? Only tells us to be cautious, because if we do see a bearish reversal candle, then those would find a top. Now, does the ES mini need another topping pattern to tell us that it's attempting to top? The answer there is no. In the case of the uh, NQ, the same pattern. Now, the NQ has a TD9 count top. If price were to close above 22.71 and a quarter, it negates that signal today. That still has resistance at 2371. And 2371 is the level that the NQ would have to trade above to tell you that we are in a full out breakout mode. Now, that's a real possibility that we could be heading there. We may not get there today, but we absolutely could be heading there. Why is that, Stevie? Now, this chart here, I can't, if I do the whole screen, it tends to turn off my monitor for reasons I don't know. I don't care. I just know a, a way around it. This is the S&P 500. This is the last 96 years' worth of data. The S&P 500 over a 96-year period typically makes a bottom around June the 24th, 25th, 26th. Today is June 28th. And this tape, and if you take a look at the uh, bottom right-hand corner, over the last 96 years, June is a positive month. I believe uh, if we go back and we take a look at the uh, monthly uh, a movement inside the uh, uh, S&P, we're going to find that that is true. That's uh, at least that is uh, that's what we've seen this month. If we take a look at July. July is the best performing month for the S&P 500. If we break down months, it's even better than the Santa Claus rally. Well, the Santa Claus rally really begins in October. You can kind of see that on the bottom right hand chart out there. But simply from a monthly standpoint, we are now in the most favorable seasonal time period for the S&P 500. You kind of get the message of what I'm sharing with you, and that's why it's really important to watch that ultimate high out there because if price close above it, then all of a sudden on a seasonal basis, and it again being the uh, level of 55.88, we will be in all-out breakout mode. That likely takes us into the middle of July. We're just about to enter July. We come back on uh, Monday out there. Now, that's what's going on inside the S&P 500. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the Dow. The Dow has resistance that it ran into. That resistance is the top of its profile, 39,739. So what do we know? We know that if price closes above 39,739, more likely than not, the Dow will go target 44,33. What's up there? At 44,33, you've got a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. And finally, we take a look at the Russell 2000, which has a buy the D point pattern that formed out here on June 17th. Price has struggled to get above that oscillator and change line. We're likely to have two consecutive bars above it as we speak today. Now, now that's a positive development, but the negative development is if this is only a counter trend move because price has been below both the center and the bottom of that bullish structure profile where price would run into resistance, which it's done so far today, is really at that 2090 level. you got to watch 2090 come day's end. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. You know, we got the end of the month. We got the end of the week. We have the end of the quarter as we speak. As uh, June, uh, this is the last trading day for June out here. So let's take a look at the monthly time frame charts. Let's get a better picture of what the bigger view looks like. This is the S&P 500, as we mentioned, June is usually an up month. We can see that that is the case here. We can see and take a look at the S&P 500. It has an A to B equal CD pattern. By the way, that retracement, there's no way that's a 0.618 retracement out there. So even though I'm showing the one-to-one -one odds favor that what the S&P 500 is doing longer term, we'll do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equal CD pattern. This one's going to get us up in the 6,000 uh, level out here, maybe around the 61.13. We don't have any. We're in bar number seven. Yeah, we've got a road momentum indicator signal. That requires a full bearish reversal signal for the monthly time frame out here. So what's this signaling to you and I as we move into July, which is the most favorable seasonal month for the S&P 500 on a 96-year basis out there? I'd have to say it's to the upside out there. Let's go. Let's not stop there. Let's take a look at the Dow, the Dow Jones out here. We take a look at the Dow. Man, this has got a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Let's go ahead and draw that in here. We'll go start with those March 2020 lows out there is the A point. B point out here is in the high came in in January of 2022. Now, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that. Uh, but this, as you can see, is a gargantuan A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, up to the upside out there. That takes us towards 48,000. Uh, so somewhere in that 48,000 level. Now, in the case of the uh, Dow, the Dow on a monthly basis does have a road momentum indicator top. That was confirmed with a bearish engulfing candle in April of 2024. However, that top has uh, given us a neutral signal. Why neutral, Stevie? Because price has remained above that green oscillator and change line. And not until we see a monthly close below that will this suggest that the uh, bullish move to the upside would be over. So at this stage here, we have a neutral signal, but if we do get a close above uh, the high in May, that's at the 40.077 level, then we're taking a look at a move up to 47, 48,000, 
uh, that that area. And you can see that it's not a 0 0.618 retracement. Typically, when you do less than a 0 0.618 retracement, you do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. How about the NDX 100? The NDX 100 is the one indice that does have the potential to form some type of top. Now, that would be between this month and the next two out there. With price well above last uh, month's uh, high out there, well above its uh, green oscillator and change line, odds favor that this continues to rally into July as well. Now, I haven't done the A to B equals CD pattern just simply because I want to take up all of your time, but we're nowhere near the completion of that pattern out there. If we take a look at the uh, Russell 2000, Russell 2000, weak compared to the other indices out here, but still in a bullish mode as price remains above that green oscillator and change line. We've seen it tested a number of times over the last several months out there, but as long as price remains above it, it being 1995.10 at the moment, it too is in a bullish mode. Now let's take a look at the semis. Other than the Rhodes Mintum indicator signal out here, they too want to move higher. Uh, we're in bar number seven. Um, it's got an A to B. So the A to B equals CD, if we start in the, uh, if we start at the 2020 low out there, and you got a lot of different swing points that you could move to, as you can see. But if we just simply are consistent, just simply use that 2020 low, well, we've already attained the one-to-one -one area there. There's no question about that. Uh, this is obviously extending itself. Now, it did have a sell the D coin pattern that was, uh, it's being negated this month. Okay, there you go. So uh, get me, let me get my cursor out here. So you had a, a bearish engulfing candle that formed in April. But that set up as a resistance level. It says that this uh, Rhodesman indicator top would get negated with a close above the high of the pattern. Well, bearish engulfing candle, you look at all the candles that it's engulfed, and that is the high of that uh, pattern out there. Well, that turns out March is high. That high was at 52.17. We're at 55.18. That pattern gets negated, and the semis are telling us that they, too, want to move higher. Now, we're looking at the bigger chart. So what we've done is we've eliminated even the daily noise. Of course, we've eliminated the weekly noise. But we're trying to understand what is the message of the markets, especially as we come into what the S&P 500 has told us over a 96-year period is the most favorable seasonal month around. We take a look at the Dow transports out there. They are struggling for sure. They're struggling because they remain below the green oscillator and change line. NASDAQ composite, no topping signal there. New York Stock Exchange does have a Roach Mintum indicator top. Now, this here would need a close above the high from four months ago. Let me give you that number out here. That is the month of um, March. And if price were to close above that, then it would negate its Roach Mintum indicator top. That being... 18342. So the New York Stock Exchange is saying not so fast, but the other indices are saying we really don't care about not so fast. We'd like to run higher. Let's take a quick peek here. I won't uh, spend as much time and belabor it, but let's take a look at the weekly charts. We have the end of the week. What do we know? We know that the Dow needs to close above 39,625 in order to give us the all clear sign to the upside. The S&P 500 is in bar number eight. Yes, on a weekly basis, you get a top on bar number eight, but bar number nine still has to complete out there. Bar number eight, it, we've got inside the NDX 100, the Russell week, but should rally up to 2067. The uh, semis out here. So the semis pull back this week, and they test that green oscillator and change line. It is still bullish on the weekly time frame. We looked at the monthly. It is bullish there, too. Transports having one heck of a week, and we haven't seen a close above the green oscillator and change line since... March, March 29th of uh, 2024. So closing above 15,373 today, that's going to increase the odds that it wants to rally as well. We can see bar number eight on a uh, TD9 count uh, pattern for the NASDAQ composite for its weekly time frame. That does not mean that it's going to top or anything. Again, that top could take place between this week and the next two out there. The New York Stock Exchange wants to rally up towards 18,286. Just to finish this off, let's pull up the daily time frame chart, see what kind of signals we have here. Now that we're getting into the noise, the Dow on a daily basis remains above its oscillator and change line. Should go target its most recent swing point. That should take us up to at least, and it's trade inside that swing point, that should take us up to at least the high of June 24th out here, and that high is at 39,571. And the S&P 500, uh, it needs a, a close above 55.05 to negate its uh, topping uh, pattern out there. In the case of the NASDAQ 100, it needs a close above 19.977.
to negate its signal out here. Russell 2000, no signals whatsoever. But looks like it wants to rally higher. The semis, what they did today is they rallied right up into resistance at 5587. That's its oscillator and change. Line. If price were to close above that, that would be signaling to you and I. We get back to 5792 out there. The transports, they want to go target 15601. The NASDAQ Composite has a TD9 count top at 17,935.99. It closed above that. We're headed higher out there. And the New York Stock Exchange for its daily time frame, even though the weekly and the monthly was a little bit weak out there, we're definitely weak out there. The daily says, I want to rally further. It's trading above its screen, oscillator and change line at 18.032. So that is the daily. We don't do this too often. Nice to do. That's the daily, the weekly, and the monthly cash indices out there and their message of the markets to you and I. We come back from this break. We're going to go take a look at Costco, AFMD, and Newmont Mining. Of course, I'd like to take a look at anything else that you'd like to look at. Just give me a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Folks, 
Let's, uh, let me just uh, repost this um, uh, seasonal pattern here for the S&P 500. I'm going to do a couple different things to it. And that is, so this is just the standard chart over 96-year period. Just so that you can see, um, you know, we're not baiting anything. It's, here's a 25-year period. When do we find, form a bottom out here over 25 years? Over 25 years, it's June 24th out there with a market rallying into the end of July before we see any kind of potential top. That's 25 years. Hey, let's shorten it down, Steve. Let's go to 15 years. What do you see here? You see price moving higher into the end of July. What do you see here if we go down to 10 years out there? You see the same thing. So it doesn't matter what time period we use right now. This is the seasonal pattern for the S&P 500. Now, one might say, hey, Stevie, we're in a presidential cycle year out there. So what does that tell us? Well, let's go take a look at presidential cycles. We've got our longest period possible out here, which uh, data that takes us back to 1928. In fact, that, that's where this chart begins, and then every four years. Well, what does this tell us? In the seasonal cycle, in a presidential election year, what do we see? We see a bottom right this week, earlier this week, that rallies us. Now, this doesn't take us into the middle of July. This takes us into the beginning of September out there. So that's a possibility. Now, we can shorten it down from 96 to 25. What do we have here? Here we've got that rally that takes us into a high towards the end of July. That's over a 25-year period. Now, in that case here, we have over 25 years. How many actual touch points do we have? Uh, shoot, I didn't mean to. What am I doing? I'm screwing this up. Definitely didn't uh, cancel. How about cancel would probably work. Um, so how many touch points? This usually tells us. Oh, I've got to put the presidential cycle. Sorry about that. That was my fault. I changed years, and then I forgot to actually hit the button out there, and which is really not a good pattern because what are we looking at? Seven. But even here, if we just look at the last quarter of a century, seven time periods of uh, – it's really six. It's got 2024 20, checked out there, so that doesn't really matter a whole lot. But what does this tell us? This tells us that we bottom this week and that we run higher into the um, September 1st out there. So look, those are the seasonal patterns. It does not mean that price needs to follow along this pattern. But just realize that with regard to, um, with regard to where we're at in the markets, everything is pointing to a further move higher out there inside of the equity markets. So what really needs to take place, I would say, as far as confirmation of that, is we really need to see those tops fail inside the equity future contracts. That's the TD9 count patterns. That's maybe a Roach Mink indicator signal that could form out there. But all this is suggesting that we really should continue to move higher. Now let's go take a look at some of the requests that have come in. The first one from ELO. ELO would like to take a look at Costco. So we take a look at Costco. Uh, it is trading right now above the top of its daily profile. It's kind of been going back and forth, so there's been a, a fight between the bulls and the bears. You actually got a profile change in trend signal ELO on June 26, two days ago. Now, yesterday, price got back inside that profile level. I said, well, Stevie, maybe not so fast. Today, we're back above it. What is it? Great question. It is 851.47. So ELO, watch to see if price closes above that. If it does, the signal that's being sent to you is on a daily time frame. Costco wants to go target 867.95. Now, don't hold me to that penny out there. That oscillator and change line is going to uh, move higher and lower as price jostles back and forth. But that's your basic area, 867 right now. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart has a rose momentum indicator top. It has a, a TD9 count top that is going to go ahead and complete uh, this week out here. It means today. And that suggests that Costco could or should move back to 837.77. Well, if price closes back below the top of its profile, ELO, you can see that you have daily profile support between 838 and 842, which would be right in line with what the weekly chart is telling us. But watch where today closes. Again, if it closes above that profile, we're going to be a while before Costco wants to move down to test that weekly green oscillator and change on a monthly basis for Costco. It's simply bullish out there. Now, what you'd really like to see when we take a look at Costco, we look at consecutive days to the upside and to the downside. We've had one three-bar move to the downside, a two-bar move to the upside. What you'd really like to see is that uh, price does not – if it closes lower today out there, what you should see – is a rally that ensues for at least a couple of days out there. But ideally, you move higher, and then all of a sudden we start shaking, we start getting rid of those consecutive days of the downside. That's when you'd start to see costs go at least rally up towards that resistance level. And again, that's going to be at that 868.03 level. So I hope that that helps you out. Let me see if Costco has a seasonal pattern out here. Uh, let's find out. 
if we've got the uh, data for it, I would hope that it would. Got to actually put in the actual, there we go, Costco. So let's pull this up. Is this the right, co yeah, Costco Wholesale. Now, we have 38 years worth of data. I have no idea what I did here with these lines. Oh, there we go. Good, they're gone. Okay. So here in the case of Costco, uh, you are in a seasonal pattern, favorable seasonal pattern that takes us higher typically over its 38-year period into the July time frame. So now let's come back here. Again, everything is really pointing that it should move up towards that 864 level. I've given you all the information I think that I can. ELO, I hope that that helped you out, and uh, best of luck to you, whatever you're doing with Costco. Dan wants to take a look at AFMD out here. So let's pull up its charts. AFMD is trading out right now at 519. So, Dan, this could form a bottom between today and Tuesday of next week. Um, it's bar number eight that's going to form. I would think it's not going to be today that the bottom forms on this. Instead, if we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart, it's trading into the buy zone. The buy zone is between 484 and 543. So I'm going to go right now with the 484 level. If we take a look at this gap to the upside, gigantic volume, big breakout, not a TD9 count breakout, just simply a single day breakout with wide volume, with, I'm sorry, with a wide price spread and accelerated volume. There were 30 million shares in the example that traded that day. Today, you've got volume of 116,000 shares. So I would say that AFMD is setting up a buy. You don't have that buy signal right now. I would let it come back. It should at least get back to 505. We're at 519 right now, but I think the 484 area is where I would be looking. If we take a quick peek at a 30-minute time frame chart, do we see any kind of a bottom signal? The answer is no, we do not. If we put up a 65-minute time frame chart out here, do we see any kind of a bottom signal? No, we do not. So AFMD definitely headed lower, but likely to form a, a bottom pattern, and I would say that would be on Monday or Tuesday. Well, certainly Monday uh, would be when that uh, TD9 count pattern would confirm, but it would be Tuesday when that pattern could complete. Uh, with regard to uh, this instrument, AFMD, let's see if there's any kind of seasonal information that we can garner from it. AFMD, AFMD, NV, uh, do we have anything? We do not. Uh, oh, I put an S. Didn't mean to have an S. AFMD, if I do that slowly, and we do. So let's go see what uh, this has in store. Nine years worth of data. This is in a seasonal, favorable seasonal cycle that's supposed to start today. It's not going to start today. But I'd start looking at Monday and Tuesday, at least for a trade, a trade that typically takes us higher into the middle of July. So hope that helps you out. We get back to this break. Let's go take a look at Newmont Mining and Marvell and any other requests that come in between now and then. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. 
with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We'll take a look at Newmont Mine. This is for Hector and Patty. And Hector's question is, is uh, on a monthly basis, is this building a base? So let's take a look at what we've got out here in a monthly time frame from Newmont Mining. Here's what we do know for sure, Hector and Patty, and that is this, that price is consolidating with inside its monthly profile, and that price is trading into its sell zone. And the sell zone is between 41.26 and 43.18. Now, I know that you asked that question because you're looking for some type of signal that Newmont Mining is going to break out to the upside and break out in a big way out there. Well, what we need to see out here, at least as a close above on a monthly basis, above 43.19. Doesn't look like we're going to get that at day's end out there. So we just have a consolidation. Your question is, is it building a base? Well, a consolidation, a sideways consolidation, would say, yes, that's the case out there. And, um, um, yeah, so, I, so, so yes, it is, or it appears to. But whether it is or it isn't, what really matters is whether or not resistance falls. And so far it hasn't. And that number is 43.18. If we begin trade above 48.318, then we likely head back to a prior swing point. That prior swing point would give us the range of 48.11 to 55.41. So that's on the monthly time frame. As long as we're looking at Newmont Mining, let's go take a look at its weekly time frame. The weekly has a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And that will take us up towards 48 and change out there. But we have going on as we speak right now. And we just simply have a consolidation with inside his profile. No topping signal or anything like that on the weekly time frame. Just simply a good old-fashioned consolidation. That's between 39.80 and 44.59. If you were to ask me on a weekly time frame, where's the buy? The buy is around 40.32. It's between 39.80 and 40.32, which is currently the uh, oscillator and change on in a weekly time frame. Now, when we take a look at the weekly time frame or the daily time frame chart, there is a new profile that formed at the beginning of the week. And price uh, yesterday, or two days ago, closed below that level. And that was kind of a suggestion that, hey, maybe we're going to head lower. However, the very next day, price got back above that level. It's just a consolidation here. Now, what Newmont needs to do, Hector and Patty, this is a bullish structured profile. First, let me give you the numbers. 41.62 to 42.21 is the buy zone. 43.11 is where the sellers are located. You need to see a close above, not just the asset and change on at 42.14, but really above the center of that bullish structured profile at 42.21. If we do get that, then we're likely to see a move up to 43.11. But in the case of Newmont Mining, is it building a base? Is it moving sideways in consolidation? Absolutely it is. And what does it need to do? you got to start closing above 43.18. And we can see how last month and the month before, that that was a significant resistance level that still is in place out there. So, Hector and Patty, uh, let's take a look at Newmont Mining. Let's see if we can get a, a seasonal factor out here. I've only got a couple of requests, uh, so we've got some time to do that. NEM is the ticker symbol. Let's see if we've got that data, and we do. Newmont Mining, how many years do we have? We've got 44 years' worth of data. 
So the 44 years worth of data would suggest that the so-called maybe a little bit of a breakout doesn't really start until the August time frame or very end of July. So you could say around July 27th. This suggests that we should see a toppy period out here. You're supposed to make a high right around July 1st, so that would basically be today um, or, or Monday when we come back out there. And it's just supposed to basically stay in that sideways consolidation. At least what, that's what it has seasonally done over the last 44-year period out there. So Hector and Patty, hope that helps you out. Have a fabulous weekend. As always, thanks so much for your request. Nicholas also writes in, and Nicholas would like to take a look at Marvell. Now, Nicholas's question, maybe you can answer this for me before I get to the charts, is will, will Marvell get up to the $75 area? So that's his question. How would you answer that question as you take a look at these charts out there? I would like to ask you, where on a daily time frame is the next level of resistance? Price is already trading above that green oscillator and change line. So it's a current level, but price is trading above that. Where is, because I want you to really be able to, if I can pull up a chart, and you can look at this, because each of you inside the Tiger's Den, what does it cost you, a dollar? Every chart that I put up is inside the Tiger's Den. You can take a snapshot of it, you can snag it or some other tool there, and you can start to learn and study and understand these patterns. Remember, these are the patterns that allowed me to become that number one market timer inside Timer's Jet Tigers, basically for two years. Remember the second year out there, I missed it by four points. That was what the S&P traded down a, more than four, a little bit more than four points on the very last day of the year. Otherwise, we would have had that record for two years in a row. And the following year with COVID is when they went ahead and closed their doors out there. So the next level of resistance inside of Marvell out here, uh, Nicholas, is at 73.50. And that's the bottom of its profile. So do I see it getting to 75? Well, first, what it has to do is take out 73.50. Turns out that on the weekly time frame, 73.42 is resistance, the top of that profile. And on a monthly time frame, 73 bucks even Steven is a TD nine count breakdown area. Will it get to 75? The answer to that question would be yes, as long as you get a close, a day, two daily closes above 73.50. In the meantime, what price should do, as long as price close above 70.57, is make the move towards that 73.50 level. Now. Let's see if Marvell has got any kind of seasonal data for us. Again, I've got to do it this way. It slows me down just a bit, but at least we don't have my screen turning off. And then me trying to figure out how do I get that thing to turn back on. Now here we've got Marvell's data, which is for a 24-year uh, time period. Is this is this right? It must be. I don't, I don't know if this is right. That's not 24 years worth of data, is it? No, it is 24 years worth of data. You know, I, I I don't know if that's really the correct, uh, I know it's the correct symbol, but I don't know if that's, the, I mean, the, seasonally it always drops off right around now. So I'm going to say that there's some bad information in that one, and we won't take a look at that. We'll just simply stick with what we've already done. So I hope that helps you out. We have a request to go take a look at Micron. MU is the uh, ticker symbol out there. What do we know about Micron? Well, what we know right now is that price is consolidating with inside its daily profile. It has support at 129.31. And below that, it's got TD9 count breakout support. And that is at 127.65. You've got a Roadsman to indicator top, again, with price being inside its profile. And it's a, it's a buy zone. It's a slightly bullish structured profile. So the buy zone here is between 129.31 and 132.53. Without any kind of a daily bottoming signal, I would suggest you're going to head back towards that 127.65 to 129.31. It'll especially do that if today's close on a weekly basis is below 133.41. Well, Steve, why don't you get really specific? That is pretty specific. That's the green oscillator and change line. That's on a weekly time frame. If price closes below that, it increases the odds of further move lower. We go back to that daily time frame to identify support. We've got it. Here's where it becomes a bit um, um, cautious. This is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count monthly pattern today. Remember, that high can come on the bar following bar number nine. What Micron is telling us longer term is that it wants to pull back to that oscillator and change line, and that is at the 101.43 level out there. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get the uh, charts uh, prepared for Lightspeed Crude. That's a question coming in from John C. So I'll get those things going. Oh, I guess we got about 15 seconds Um what can I do in 15 seconds? In 15 seconds, you know what I can do? we got less than 15 seconds now. But let me just get over, take a quick peek at the intraday charts for the ES Mini out here. Let's just see if there's any kind of signals out here 
that we can see. 557350 is a key level of resistance on the 240 minute time frame chart. Uh, two, uh, the five hour chart says maybe by day's end, you could get a TD nine count topping signal out there. Other than that, Stevie doesn't see too much. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're gonna take a light sweet crew. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers whether through charts or videos larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets you can sign up now at tfnn.com for just 97 dollars and with all tfnn newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee you have nothing to risk for all the details visit tfnn.com you'll find fibonacci 24 7 right under the newsletters tab are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look at Lightspeed Crew, which has a daily TD9 count top out there. That is the uh, chart here. Uh, I'll go, simply go ahead and expand. Uh, let me pull this back just a tad. It'll be easier to see. So you've got this nice TD9 count top out here. You've also got a profile that he's trading within, John. So the same level is uh, is the key out here, which is uh, 8179. They've got um, if price closes above, let's call it 8190, because that's the top of the profile. If Light Street Crude is able to close above 8190, John, then we've got a move higher. Now you've also got that profile that's got support at 7966. So even if Light Street Crude pull back, that would be your buy point. It would be that 79. It would really be between 7966 right now and 8017. On a weekly time frame, this is suggesting to you and I that price wants to eventually make a move up to 85.27. But in order to do that, it's got to clear the top of its monthly profile. That's at 83.11. 30-minute chart is giving you a TD9 count bottom. At least on an intraday period, you should see a rally up towards 81.83. So I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at Amazon. So let's get those charts up on our screen out here. AMZN. What do we have? I don't see any kind of a daily top. 
It su suggests to me that it wants to rally further. The weekly is saying the same thing. It's got no type of top out here. It is negating its uh, roads mintum indicator top this week. It's trading above profile. It's green oscillator and change line to the moon is what Amazon is suggesting, and the same signal is coming from that monthly time frame. So, Duncan, hope that helped you out there. Let's uh, finish off by taking a look at Tesla for McGuffey, T-S-L-A. A nice little rally. It's dealing with resistance. That resistance is at 201.90, I believe. That is the top of it is, is uh, 201.09, 201.09. That is the top of its weekly bearish structured profile out there. If price is able to close the day above 201.09 without any kind of a topping signal on the daily time frame. In fact, what this could be doing on the daily time frame is setting up an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. The swing high out here, that swing high is at 198.87. The volume on that was 243 million shares. This week, and it's summer trading, you are up with 50 million shares. So much lighter volume, but it still could trigger an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. But right now, the key on Tesla is its weekly bearish structured profile. Folks, have a fabulous weekend. Thanks for all your participation. Uh, enjoy the weather wherever you're at, even if it's hot like we are down here in Florida. Just bring Gatorade when you're out on that golf course. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Take care, folks. We'll see you next week.